Today's scenes in the US Capitol are disgusting and they need to be condemned in the strongest possible terms. I make no bones about doing so, just like I condemned and continue to condemn the fascist mobs and looters masquerading as Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Remember, those were the violent thugs and criminals who were empowered by the Democratic Party and the mainstream media. As they looted and killed and smashed their way across America, the truth was ignored and they were proclaimed as righteous and peaceful protests. These people took over cities and they targeted police for execution and still the political left remained largely silent. And after four years of race baiting, identity politics, lying about the president and undermining democracy, the really culpable are now standing on the box of piousness that they've avoided for so long. They're only doing it now because it just so happens to suit their political agenda. And let me say it again, just to be crystal clear, what happened today is a disgrace. But so is what has happened in America for the last four years. Many will want to blame Donald Trump as they pursue the democracy is under attack narrative. In fact, it's already started. But the reality is, if it has been under attack, it's been every day of the past four years as the swamp creatures refuse to accept the validity of Donald Trump's election. His crime is that he beat the crooked establishment and then set about draining the corrupt swamp that Washington has become. Now, I regret, and I've made this very clear, that he didn't succeed. The forces against him were simply too strong. The misrepresentation, the lies, the fake news, and the walking dead of the bureaucracy all worked against him. Do you remember the Russian collusion claims? Well, they were a hoax. It took four years to find out, but this was known all the time by those that peddled them starting with Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. And what about the Hunter Biden laptop? It contained damning evidence of corruption and salacious scandal, and yet it was ignored by the media and the subject of a go-slow order by those entrusted with upholding the law. There were so many other egregious offences by those who now act as pure as the driven snow that it has cast a very dark stain on the US political system, and in particular, their cosy relationship with the mainstream media and the tech media. And still Trump got more presidential votes than any president before him, only to be beaten in the oddest of circumstances by a scarcely seen geriatric with clear cognitive difficulties. It almost sounds too fanciful to be true. But that's not to say President Trump has been without flaws himself. His style and nature will rank her with many, but he has been an extraordinarily successful president. His Middle East peace record is second to none. His calling out China took great courage. And his handling of the economy saw more jobs and more growth than many who came before him. And that economic success, of course, ground to a halt thanks to COVID-19. And there are many who will blame him for that. However, those same people condemned him for quickly closing the borders, identifying the source of the virus as China, promoting treatments that were effective, and they ridiculed his mission to fast-track a vaccine, saying it was impossible. Well, his critics were wrong on all those scores, and it's no coincidence that the places where coronavirus has wreaked the most havoc in the United States have been largely Democrat-controlled. Now, today's acts will be used to undermine much, much that was to be admired about the Trump presidency. It makes one wonder why security around the Congress was so lax. The result has been tragic, and it will obviously feed a narrative that Trump's critics are desperate to promote. But when considered in the cold light of day, ask yourself, who is really to blame for saying that American democracy and society was flawed, fractured and broken for the past four years? Who was it that empowered and excused the rightist and racist mobs for political ends? Who was it that created so many irregularities in the electoral system as to leave it open to myriad claims of fraud? It certainly wasn't President Donald J. Trump.